boys and girls, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're going to be talking about trading somebody again. Yes, because that's what I do. We did Claude Giroux. We did Mark andre Fleury. Last time we did Connor Garland. Why did I do them? Because they're rumored by very important people to be moving. And I'm going to look at that in the one that we're doing today. Ben Chirot. And I'm doing Ben Chirot mostly because I get all the letters in the land. Oh my gosh, we go down to the mailroom every day. Guido comes up with the sack of letters and we pour it all over the letter table and we read them. And everybody, everybody wants Ben Chirot. Ben Chirot is a big name out there with the NHL folk on people that want them on their team. So I thought, let's do that. Stu Ben Sherrod. And it just so happens that Mr. Elliot Freeman brought up Ben Sherrod as a possibility to be traded to a whole bunch of places. So we're going to look at that. Um, now, we know that Montreal's had a pretty rough season. Uh, ben Sherrod, we're going to look at his contract and some of the reasons why he may be on the block. Um, and we're going to look at five teams that he could be traded to. Now, I looked at this before. Four. I was looking at this before. When I got all the letters, I was like, where could he go? So I went and did, I picked five teams that I would put him on. And then Mr. Elliot Freeman came out and shed some light on the situation. If you don't know who Elliot Freeman is, he's Sportsnet, Canadian icon, basically, of rumors and stuff like that. If Elliot Freeman says it, everybody listens. So... Uh, he just happened to name some of the teams I'd already had on my list, which makes it, I think, even more possible that Mr. Sherrod could go there. Now, as I'm going through this, I'm going to talk about my own personal opinion about Ben Sherrod. might differ from yours. Tell me what you think of Ben Sherrod, what you would want, if you would like him on, on your team down there in the comment section. And let's go take a look at the rumors right now, shall we? Oh, before I go subscribe hit the bell of course we got like i get like 1400 views on my videos and hardly any of them are subscribing but they watch them over and over again so just touch that sub button helps me out an awful lot i'm trying to get to a g also if you want to talk about this a little further you can go to the after you sub up i do a show often from 1 30 to 3 30 somewhere around there eastern when i feel like at a clock called the NHL Pearl O Wisdom Show, where we talk all things hockey, lots of trade stuff and everything fun. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and things to do with those four major sports, you'll love the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Let's go. Okay, here is the talk of the rumor. Zach Leach from... Pro Hockey Rumors, pretty good darn, I will. I, I listen to this all the time. I say these, uh, Pro Hockey Rumors does one of the best jobs I have seen at giving you information that quite often comes up as truth. So I, I really like it a lot. And uh, part of the reason why is they listen to some fine people like Elliot Friedman, who I, of course, did his 32 thoughts. We did Mark andre Fleury. He was also mentioned. And now we're doing Ben Chirot. And it says, Ben Chirot's name has been out there among trade candidates all season, and it isn't going away. As the top impending free agent on the NHL's worst team. So that, like, we're going to look at his contract as well. And, yeah. He is an impending free agent. So that makes his trade availability very likely out there for, again, the worst team in the NHL. Um, it's, he's a near lock to be dealt. Elliot Freeman says he's a lock, so pretty good chance that he's going to be a lock. Freeman reports that the Calgary Flames, Florida Panthers, St. Louis Blues are among the teams confirmed to have interest. You know what? I'm going to add the Calgary Flames on here. I didn't even have the Calgary Flames on here, but we'll add it. 
But Freeman also keys in another possibility, the Toronto Maple Leafs. No, I'm not. Because I remember, I looked at the Calgary Flames. They got Goo Branson and Zadorov. I, I just really see no reason why they would go after Sherratt. They already have a lot of players that look like that. That's right. That's why I didn't go down there. But if you think they can still go for him, then you tell me. The rum, rumblings out of Toronto suggest the Leafs are targeting a defenseman at the trade deadline. And they may, may very well need to escape, need one to escape the ultra competitive Atlantic division. Friedman notes that the club kicked the tires on Chirot when he was a free agent and could be a top contender to land him this time around. Okay, I got five teams that he may go to. And I am going to say that all of those teams are possible, are on my list of. Uh, teams, but they're not the only ones on my list. First of all, let's look at Ben Chirot's numbers here. Uh, 41 In 41 games this year, he's had 9 points and a minus 25. Of course, as we know, it's the worst team in the NHL, so I'm not really a big plus-minus guy. Maybe you're not either. Uh, also, I'm not a big Ben Chirot guy, but a lot of people are. I his, his defensive and offensive analytics are not very good. Um, when I watch him, I don't really see the appeal all that much. Um, except I will say that there is huge value. There is some pretty good value in a player that can bring pain. And he can bring pain. He's 6'3", 234, and he's not afraid to use it. And in the playoffs, a guy like that can wear down the opposition a lot. The thing is, is I wouldn't want to be playing him against top competition all that much. He's not very good when he gets the puck on his stick. He's okay at getting the puck off of other people's sticks, but he needs somebody to swoop down and grab the puck pretty quick. Um, not ideal for me to have in your top four. I would say, but I know there's going to be general managers that think otherwise out there. There are, there are many general managers and teams that just put so much value on the pain Ben Chirot can bring to wear down the opposition that I'm sure he's going to garner a first. I bet you he's going to garner a first round pick. I don't know if you guys think that that is the appropriate value for him. Well, maybe you do. From people I've talked to with all the letters I got, they do. People just love this guy because everybody loves the guys that bring pain, right? Because you want to see that. You want to see that. And there is value to that in the playoffs, no doubt about it. It's value to a player that can bring wear down the opposition. So first one I have here is the L.A. Kings. Now, I have the L.A. Kings here. They are in a playoff spot as we speak, or close to it. Um, and they are a fairly small, small bu bunch on the on the D-line. Only Mata is their biggest player. And he doesn't do too bad at, uh, at uh, physicality, but I wouldn't put him as like the epitome of physicality on your D-line for sure. Matthias Bjornfort. He does very well in that category as well. It's not huge, but he, he, he does bring physicality quite a bit. In fact, I would say this whole D-line doesn't back down from anybody. But they don't necessarily punish anybody either. Drew Doughty certainly doesn't back down from anybody. He can put up some big hits and stuff. So uh, the reason why I brought him up is I had many people asking you know, the LA Kings, can they get some physicality and all of those sort of things like that? And Ben Chirot's name did come up, so I thought I'd take a look at the possibility. First of all, he's a left defenseman. So where is he going to fit on this roster? Right now, they're waiting, of course, for Alexander Edler to come back. Nobody knows when he'll be back, and he might not be back. And that's one of the reasons why Ben Chirot's name is out there. Uh, of course, Michael Anderson as well. He is um, unknown. His injury status is unknown as well. If Anderson comes back, you would have to take into the consideration that Ben Chirot would be taking either he or Oli Mata or Bjorn Fitz, Fitz minutes away. 
Now, possibly, you could be just bringing Sherrod in to replace them for injury reasons. If that's the case, I don't think you want to pony up a first for that, right? I wouldn't. So maybe you look at uh, trying to send a player or a prospect back. Who? Jared Dolan Anderson. You want to go that way? I mean, I really like Jared Dolan Anderson. I'm not sure I'd want to send him for a guy like Ben Chirot. But again, this all depends on the value that you have on a guy his size, stature. And also, if you take into consideration the LA Kings do have the money in cap space to consider resigning Mr. Uh, Sherratt. And that would definitely be something to consider as well. Oh, come on. Sorry. That's something to consider as well. Maybe they want to resign him. They are a fairly young group of forwards for the most part. 26, 20, 23. Jersey's 23. Even Anderson's only 22. So Sherratt would definitely be bringing a little bit of more better in leadership to this group for the future. I think if they're thinking about possibly re-signing them, it might make a little more sense here. Uh, right now, they have current cap space, $8 million. Uh, projected cap space, $23 million. Of course, they've got a lot of players that they are going to have to re-sign in the offseason. Uh, Ole Mata being one of them. Uh Athanasio possibly, Dustin Brown not necessarily. He got a lot of room, and he does bring a lot of pain. Maybe you want to do something like that. I personally, like I said, I'm not a huge Sherrod guy, but if you are, and if they are, this is a deal that could, I think could make sense for the long term in their own minds, and I could see them going to L.A. Uh, another thing that would make this palatable for Montreal is – the prospect of them being able to resign uh, Ben Chirot, they could add another pick in there. You could add a pick. I'm not sure they want to give up a first for Ben Chirot. Um, maybe a guy like, uh, like I said, a prospect like Jared Dolan Anderson, and if you resign, then a third round pick or something of that nature. But tell me what you think, LA fans. Do you like the idea of uh, Mr. Sherratt going to LA. I per I I personally don't think it's a very good idea, but you can tell me what you think there. Okay, let's go to the next one, and that is the Toronto Maple Leafs, as Mr. Elliot Friedman had already indicated that they would be interested in Ben Sherratt. Now, I know I've had more letters from anybody than the Toronto Maple Leafs wanting Ben Sherratt. There's a lot of possibility that this could be the case. Do they need size? And Yeah, they probably do. They need physicality in this lineup, I would say, would be something that would definitely be a benefit to them. Again, I personally don't think ben, the, the compensation for the physicality that Ben Chirot brings is worth the lack of defense and, and offense that he brings to the lineup. However, I know for sure that a lot of people are going to disagree with me. Who is he going to replace? He's a left defenseman. He would replace Travis Dermott, who I'm not a big fan of either, and you could actually make possibly part of the deal. If Toronto were to offer up Dermott and a first-round pick, I think it would almost be guaranteed they would get it, get uh, Sherratt there. Now, in order to do that, probably Mr. Dubas is going to have to think he's better than I think he is uh, he, as far as his defensive acumen is concerned. I have mentioned it in the previous one. I think that his physicality is a benefit in the playoffs more than the regular season for sure. And a seven-game series, a guy that can bring pain like that can make other people's stats look a lot better because he wears down the opposition. I get it. I would give up something for him. I personally wouldn't give up a first. But I think that's what it's going to take 
Toronto Maple Leafs fans to get Ben Chirot because, like I said, the value of him bringing the pain like he does for the playoffs. There's a lot of general managers out there. First of all, that doesn't really don't really pay attention to analytics all that much, and second of all, value that immensely. So look at it. This is what it's going to probably bring it be be if they like Travis Dermott there in Montreal. It could be Dermott. Almost certainly, it's going to be a first round pick. Now the likelihood is Toronto will not be able to sign uh, Sherratt after this season unless, like, they didn't sign back Comp. Um, maybe Kasha, all of these guys, and then they choose to sign him instead. You still got to fill get a lot Sandine signed, which won't cost all that much. But it's they're gonna they would have to jump through a bunch of hoops now. It, and plus you got to sign Jack Campbell in the offseason. This would almost surely be a pure rental. So for a rental, for a guy, tell me what you think about Sherrod. Do you think he's good defensively? Like do you care about analytics at all? You just say. Hey, I've seen him play. He looks like he's good defensively. He brings pain. We need a guy like that that can move people in front of the net and all of those things. I'd be happy to give up a first and um, Mr. Travis Dermott for that or Justin Hole or which I, I think it would almost certainly be Dermott. Now, when you look at the uh, depth chart, where where's Sherratt? Just say you do acquire him and you do think more highly of him than I do. Where is he going to play? Uh, we're waiting for Mu Jake Muzzin to come back. So he's going to be your third defenseman playing with uh, Timothy Lilligren in the playoffs because he's not taking Muzzin's spot. He's not taking O'Reilly's spot. Right? So he's going to be your third defenseman. You're going to give up Travis Dermott, which I am don't mind giving up. I don't think he's that great. But a first-round pick for him? Tell me what you think, guys. Uh, I think that's what it's going to cost you, and I'll tell you why. Because the next one we're going to look at is the Florida Panthers. And this is the name I've heard more than any other name out there right now. It's Florida Panthers all over it. Now, I've also heard them in on Chikrin. If they're in on Chikrin, it's not likely they're going to have to give up probably the assets they would give up for Sherratt to get Chikrin. And then... That frees up anybody who might want to be interested in, in them. But if they are, and again, all the letters, everybody wants Sherratt. What are they going to give up? Simply a first-round pick. And probably a caveat, if you re-sign them, then you'll get another pick. Either that or possibly a prospect. And a pretty darn good one because I really think that like it's shown over and over and over again at the deadline. Big guys like that, regardless of what their analytics are like, doesn't matter. Big defensemen like Ben Chirot, who can play at least in the league, garner a lot at the deadline. So maybe a guy like Gregory Denisenko or Hepanimi and a third-round pick if he signed. Florida Panthers fans. That would put him, he's not taking Gustav Forsling's spot. I doubt it very much. I hope not. Gustav Forsling is a freaking amazing defenseman. For uh, for a top three poor guy, he's better than Sherratt by significant amount. All right? So he's going to be looking at playing him with a guy like Brandon Montour, which I like, by the way. If you're going to use Ben Sherratt at his best, at his best, he's pretty good at getting the puck off other people's sticks. And he can bring a lot of pain. And a guy like Brandon Montour can be there to move the puck out for him. Um, out of all the ones that we've talked about so far with L.A. and Toronto, I believe Florida here would be the best spot for him as far as how they could get the most out of what his strengths are. Um, but it's going to cost you a first-round pick, guys. I'm telling you right now, it's going to cost a first-round pick for uh, for Ben Sherratt. And I do believe, do they even have a first-round pick? Look at that, you don't. It's going to cost you next year's first. They've already given up a first and a second. 
I hear it over and over again. They want Ben Sherratt in Florida. Now, the other thing I have heard, that's right, I want to talk about that too, is Tippett. Now, if this team is willing to give up Owen Tippett for Ben Sherratt, let's just say I'd be very disappointed in them. Owen Tippett has probably got, he's got an incredible shot. He's only 22 years old. Yeah, I mean, I, he's kind of buried in the lineup. I get it. And, you know, I, I definitely would think that it would be a good idea to move him for his sake and for the team's sake, but not for Ben Chirot. Please tell me. Tell me what you guys think. Would you give up Tippett for Ben Chirot? I've discussions in Florida groups and with Florida people, they seem very willing to do so. So tell me what you guys think, Florida fans. Another one that came up is St. Louis Blues. The St. Louis Blues are known to like their big bruising guys regardless of where they are in the lineup. Uh, you know, they, they draft that way. They have Clem Costin, uh, Oscar Sundquist, Buknevich is a big guy, uh, Riley, you know the type of game he plays. They don't have anybody on the roster that's under six feet tall, except for Tory Krug on defense. And they just signed Robert Bertuzzo today, by the way, to an extended 6'4", 6'3". You're starting to see a theme here. They love their big defensemen. So they would they be interested in Sherratt? I think they would. Um, I don't think he's any better than Scandella. But he is more willing physically than Scandella. And for that, I know St. Louis values that. So I could see them doing it. Again, we just saw what happened, what Florida would probably offer. We just saw that, you know, one of these teams are going to offer a first round pick. Now, I know that for sure that St. Louis loathes the idea of trading their first round pick. They generally have made a habit of keeping their first round pick every year. And in doing so, they picked up guys like Jordan Cairo, Clem Coaston. They are Robert Thomas. I can't imagine them going and giving up their first for Sherratt now. I can't. But I want to know fans... And by the way, sub yourself up, hit the like button. I do these types of things all the time. I'd love to have you come on and enjoy the fine programming here on a regular basis. I get like thousands of views, but very few subscribers. So I'd love to have you subscribe up and be part of this. Um, what Are you willing to give up maybe Clem Costin instead? Like I know they don't want to be giving up their first round pick. I know they don't. And, and Montreal is going to be looking for young players of some kind. For sure, they're going to be looking for young players of some kind. So you're going to look in your Alexei Tropachenko, who I really like, playing in the minors right now. Some of their other youth that they have, Dylan Peterson, Simone Robertson. Who, would you, who are you going to give up for them? You're not giving up Jake Neighbors, right? Oh my gosh, that guy is beastly. I couldn't possibly imagine you would do that. Do would you? Would you be willing to give up a guy like Jake Neighbors, St. Louis Blues fans? Um, difficult for me to. And then you got to remember that Scott Peruna, uh, Perunovic has got to come back. So I, I get a lot of people saying that they from St. St. Louis fans saying they want Ben Chirot. I'm not sure where he fits here. Maybe you guys can help me out. Seventh defenseman. Are you going to give up a first-round pick for a seventh defenseman? I wouldn't, but it's up to you. Maybe you will. Maybe they will. People value defensemen. I mean, general managers value defensemen huge in come playoff time. You have a guy go down, you need a guy there. Having a guy like Ben Sherrod is quite the weapon for, you know, seven-game series over and over and over again to make it to the finals. I'm telling you, even for a, if they think he's going to fit in the seventh spot, somebody could drop a first for him. Somebody really good. Next, Edmonton Oilers. And make sure you're subbing yourself up, guys. I do this content usually once, twice a week on players that could be traded. We're going to be doing trade deadline live streams and all that. Hit the like button. 
sub yourself up to this fine programming. We're looking at the Edmonton Oilers. And of course, the first thing Edmonton Oilers fans are going to say right now is they don't care about their defense. They just want goaltending, goaltending, goaltending. Well, as we can see here, Mike Smith is back. This is right after the All-Star break. Mike Smith is back. I am almost positive they're going to roll with him until the deadline. And maybe you're right. Maybe they go for a goaltender if Mike Smith can't handle it. They'll definitely be looking for a goaltender. I am mad. I think it's going to have, be, have to be somebody like Flurry in order for this defense to matter in the playoffs. If you're not going to go shore up the defense, it's going to be, have to be somebody like Flurry. Now, Ben Sherratt, I've heard it from Oilers fans like crazy. We want Ben Sherratt. If we're going to get a defenseman, Ben Sherratt. I, again, it, you, if you don't pay attention to analytics, then I guess you don't. But even my eye test, Ben Sherratt is not very good defensively. The biggest problem in my eyes, anyways. Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe you don't agree with me. I don't know. But neither is Duncan Keith. Cody Cece's okay. William Lagesson's getting better. Tyson Berry is terrible. And Darnell Nurse is average at best. Evan Bouchard is getting better and better all the time. Where does Cody see? This is, I actually, as much as I do not think that Ben Sherrod is that great defensively, I actually wouldn't want mind the Oilers picking him up just to take Tyson Berry out of the lineup. I would rather have Tyson Berry or uh, Ben Sherrod playing with William Lagesson or actually it wouldn't take Ben Barry out of the lineup. He would have to play with Tyson Barry. Is he better than Lagesson? It's actually not that much better, but he does bring more pain than both of those, than Lagesson does. If there's one thing about Sherratt, he will bring pain and Tyson Barry can take the puck off a stick and try to move it up the ice. I suppose. Would I give up? A first for him? No, I wouldn't. Would you give up a first for, for Sherratt? Tell me in the comments section if you would give up a first, Oilers fans, for Ben Sherratt. Uh, what would you give up for him? Because I'm pretty sure somebody's going to give up a first-round pick for him. And we know that Holland is not much for giving up a first-round pick, especially for a rental. I also am inclined to think that Ben Sherratt's going to get overpaid in on the free agent market as well and Edmonton probably won't be able to overpay for a guy like Ben Sherratt thank God because they won't have the cap room to do it so this would be a pure rental I think the odds of this happening are slim based on what Holland has really shown throughout his general manager career he hates giving up first round picks he absolutely hates it he will only do it in certain situations, and thankfully, to me anyways, he probably won't do it in this situation. So what could Edmonton possibly give up? Uh, I, I think he would probably offer Dmitry Samarukov, who's been okay. Obviously, he wasn't happy with them with the one game he played since he benched him for the whole game. He's 22 years old, and he wasn't able to play one NHL game without looking like a train wreck. Now, that was his first game. He could be good down the road. The fact of the matter is the Edmonton Oilers need somebody now. I would actually consider just trading Samarukov for Ben Sherratt, even if he's going to be a seventh defenseman and even if he's going to be a rental because he's a guy that can play if people get injured now. He can put in the lineup. He does bring some pain that we don't have in the lineup right now on the defensive end. And in a long seven-game series, if we happen to go that way, there is value in a guy that can bring pain, even if he's not wonderful defensively or offensively. So I would do something like that. Would I give up my first? No. Tell me what you guys would give up, though, there in Edmonton Oilers land, which is where I live. I live in Edmonton. Remember, Sub yourself up. This content is going to keep on a comment. New York Rangers.
is the next one. This is the one I've heard a lot of is the New York Rangers. So New York Rangers love these kind of guys. They draft not they draft big, solid, strong defensemen. Um, they may want if they really think the question really here, if it is the New York Rangers that are looking at a guy like Ben Sherratt, is how much do they think they can do it this year? Really. And tell me, Rangers fans, how much do you think the Rangers have this year? How much of a chance do they have against the Tampa Bay Lightnings, Florida Panthers, Carolina Hurricane, if they go to the finals to Vegas, Colorado, if they were to make it there? I would say if you think they can beat Tampa Bay and those teams, then there's a pretty good chance you think they can beat uh, Vegas or Colorado as well. And with their defense that they have right now, look at it. They have Keandre Miller is 22. Ryan Lindgren's 23. Libor uh, Hayek is 24. And, you know, Adam Fox, of course, will be back. And he's huge. But it's a very young defense. I Again, I'm not a huge Chirac guy, but I've heard – listening in the Rangers chat rooms and stuff like that there's a lot of people that are he does bring a lot of pain he does bring veteran leadership I do believe that somebody's going to pony up a first round pick for him so my question for you is are you willing to pony up a first round pick for Ben Sherrod to go this year as a rental primarily they possibly could find value in his veteran leadership and, and sign him up. But I mean, when you got Kyandre Miller and Lindgren and you got, there's a lot of really good players that are coming up in like Zachary Jones. Is he really, are they really going to sign him long-term to kind of block the spots for these young players that are coming up? I would lean no, but they do have some interesting players that they can give back. If not a first round pick. Philip Heedle, and I got in trouble the last time I did this by calling him Heidel. And by the way, his actual the actual way you're supposed to say his name is Heetiel. So we were both wrong. Ah. <laughs> they, they could try Heedle. Maybe Montreal would be interested in a 22-year-old guy that hasn't really panned out the way the New York Rangers wanted. Maybe they could see something in that rather than a first-round pick. Um, and then, of course, they've got that. They tally craps off sitting over there in the KHL. Uh, putting up some pretty decent numbers, by the way, in the KHL. That looks like he's never going to play for the Rangers again. I don't know how much value he has. Uh, I've heard a lot of other options that New York Rangers have been looking at, like JT Miller and uh, guys like that for their offense, for uh, center depth. Maybe Kratsov would be part of that, but he could be part of this. Would you be willing to give up Kratsov? He isn't going to play with you again for a rental in Ben Chirot. I've heard over and over and over again, people want Ben Chirot, but what are you willing to give? Um, I know uh, being an Edmonton Oilers fan, pretty much all homers, they generally look at their lineup and take a whole bunch of players that they don't really want and then hope that they can get somebody they really want. That usually doesn't work that way. It's going to be a player that more than likely it's going to be a player or players or draft picks that you don't want to give up to get somebody, especially a big, solid defenseman for the playoffs like Ben Chirot. Regardless of what analytics say about his defense and offense, historically, big guys like Ben Chirot get first-round picks at the table at the uh, deadline. So what do you think? That's my full 42, everybody. That's all I have to give today. Chub yourself up. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Okay, bye.